It's the house rules. Matt Rule, Huskers football. We'll talk about the staff coming up on Locked On. You are Locked On Huskers, your daily podcast on the Nebraska Cornhuskers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey everybody, DP here, Derek Pearson live from Lincoln, Nebraska, home of the Fighting Huskers. Welcome to Locked On Huskers, and we appreciate you making Locked On Huskers your first watch, first listen each and every single day. Greatly appreciate the folks from Locked On Sports for allowing us to bring this content to you each and every single day. I want to thank the folks from FanDuel. We're excited about our new sports uh, partner. Um, they're the number one sports book. Like, we're good in that space. And, of course, as we head into Super Bowl weekend, they put some numbers out there, uh, some wages out there for you. This is pretty impressive stuff. Of course, the Eagles are a one-and-a-half-point favorite on FanDuel. Um, from those numbers, uh, there's some some wagers you could place based on who the first score is, uh, the over-under for points. The over-under is 50-and-a-half. 50-and-a-half. I, I'm a little surprised by that, actually, um, especially when it's weather controlled. But that's just me. Uh, who will be the first score? Would it be Travis Kelsey? Will it be Jalen Hurts? Uh, how many yards will Jalen Hurts throw for? Uh, the over-under is 238. Ponder that. Later in the show, we'll give you those Mahomes numbers, and we'll talk a little bit more about what they offer for you. FanDuel.com, locked on. Have at it. You can claim your your first uh, no sweat first bet. The code is fifty seven. Written out fifty seven. That's the Fanduel code uh, at Locked On, and you can use the 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 slash uh, on Fanduel. Use Locked On. It's right there at the bottom of your screen. Go ahead and handle it. Um, for Matt Rule and his time here uh, at the University of Nebraska. First things in the renovation of, of a program and the redirection of a program and the reforming of a program is choosing who's going to help you do this. And he has been methodical and purposeful in trying to put together the staff. So in this episode, we're going to talk about the offensive side of the ball. And I think that's uh, that's going to be interesting because some of the choices made – real loud sense. And then the others, there are some question marks. And here's what we know about this coaching staff so far. Very little. We we get we're getting piecemeal behind what the 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 mentality is going to be, what the rules of engagement are going to be, what rules rules are going to be, and then why these selections are made. And it becomes purposeful. I chose to wait until I had actually met the members of this staff before I spoke on them. Um, color me silly that I actually like to have knowledge of rather than speculation of. I, I want to wait until I can actually uh, get in front of the staff to get a feel for who they are, how they operate, what their energy is, and then go into the, the X's and O's side of it. I am far more interested in the Jimmys and Joes of who this coaching staff is rather than the, the what X's and O's they run. That will come later, and there'll be more than enough time to go through what each of these coaches in this space uh, like to operate from. And the common thread and the first thing that was noticed to me was there's a wide range of systems in play with all of these coaches. None of these coaches work under the same umbrella at the same energy um, with the same focus. But they're all all-knowing. They all could go from one group to another with consideration of the other group. Uh, the receivers coach and the tight ends coach have enough connection and enough similar thinking, but enough variances on the spectrum that they'll be able to cover whatever's in play. Now, to say this, all of these coaches are going to have to come in, learn, a new, learn the roster that exists, the returning players that existed, go through all of their film. Uh, go through meetings with each and every member of their group uh, and then as a group and then as an offensive whole, and then to make whatever changes and adjustments are required. Now, the returning group of players know more about the campus and the wherewithal where everything is than the coaches. So it's going to take the, while, the coaches a while 
to acclimate themselves in this space and figure out, okay, where can I go to eat? Uh, where can I go for, for, for the various things that I need? Finding a place to live, unpacking, relocating, getting rid of old gear, putting in new gear, uh, meeting all the new administrators uh, that they have to deal with, uh, going through their, their onboarding for all the rules that are in play for the University of Nebraska and the University of Nebraska Athletic Department and the community that is. <laughs> they also have to get to know the folks behind the NOL coalition, and you have to know who they are. Even if though you can't directly interact with them that way, you have to know who they are, who the power brokers are in this town. And when you're talking about college towns, specifically the University of Nebraska, there are a lot of people behind the curtain that you have to get to know and to become familiar with. So the coaches have their hands full, but we at least now we know who they are. We know who they are. We have some idea about what they work from. Like, I think it's pretty interesting that as we talk about this stuff. So understand that he added, uh, if, if Satterfield is your, is your offensive coordinator, who has been around and who has enough resume professionally, and whether it be on the NFL side or the collegiate side, to, to, to mark down recent success against some prominent SEC programs. So we kind of have a pretty good idea about what Satterfield is going to bring to the table, how he's going to try to get it done. Now, you'll ask yourself several questions. And again, as we go through these shows in the offseason leading up to the spring game in April, that a lot of this we will hear more from all of these coaches. And we'll hear from Satterfield. What type of skill position players do you need? What Will the competition be based on, right? What changes are you going to make in the way Nebraska football was played? What is your philosophy for practice, improvement season, weightlifting, uh, film study? All those things are different. And all of the coaches who coach underneath him have to honor that. They have to honor. It's a big deal to be an offensive coordinator in a power five school, especially when you're rebuilding. Now, he's had success. He knows how to score against you know SEC SEC defenses. Um, that gives us some some rejoice, some feeling of rejoicement because we 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 believe that they'll be able to put points on the board and move the football. But in the Big Ten Conference, where the defenses are a little different. The climate is a little different. <laughs> Sling the ball around in in Gainesville, Florida in, in October is different than slinging it around in Ann Arbor in November. All of those things are in play. And, and, and look, Satterfield has the resume for it. Can he get into this space, work with the existing talent, recruit new talent, train said new talent, and then get on the same page with Matt Rule because Nebraska knows that not always have recent coordinators and head coaches been on the same page. Sadly, that is a statement of truth. We'll pause there and put a pen in it. I uh, want to thank the folks, <laughs> again, FanDuel, for what you do. Um, I, I I wanted to say this before we go to break. Um, I've gone through some health stuff, health issues. And I had to change the way I do business, I had the way I live my life. Well, if you're going to do that, what I would tell you is this, you got to try Built Bar. Y you have to try it. So I went through um, diabetes, di diabetes issues, I had to change my diet. Well, here, Built Bars, they're good and they're good for you. For starters, covered in 100% real chocolate. All sorts of options, uh, churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond, all sorts of choices. Yeah. And if you're, you know, just down for it, just go to go to Built Bars at Built.com. Go check it out. There's plenty for your soul, good for your, your body, and good for living. All right. More Locked on Huskers. Welcome back to Locked on Huskers. I'm Derek Pearson. Uh, and talking about Matt Rule's 
offense and his staff. We'll talk. We'll get a little bit more meat and potatoes before we uh, get too far into it. I do want to say uh, thanks for making Locked On Huskers uh, your first listener today. For your second listen, click our click our brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Experts Isaac at Sh- uh, Shade and Andy Patton bring you everything you need to know on and off the court. Plus, hear from big name experts, coaches, players throughout the basketball landscape. Uh, Locked On College Basketball available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Um, Satterfield and and Rule have their common working space. They then brought on EJ Barthel to handle the running backs room. And Barthel is a new age coach in energy. When you meet certain coaches, the vibe is I am fluid and functional in old school football, uh, ethics of work and other. Then there are folks who are technical guys who can tell you how to get your, your, your foot movement, uh, how to quicken your foot, uh, foot movement, um, upper body movement, control, working from your core. Well, the Huskers have a running backs coach who will fit, from my perspective, will fit with the running backs who are currently in the room. This is a veteran running back room for the Huskers. These are folks who have had, who had, you know, A.J. Allen returns from an injury. Uh, you've got Two, three, three starters who 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 return, folks who who handled the ball for Nebraska in big moments. But Barthel's space is going to be one, connecting to Satterfield and Rule and what they what what the plan is going to be, depending on who the, the opponents are. Is this going to be a run first offense? I don't think run first is the right way to talk about it. I think it is run as a priority rather than a run first being purposeful in the running game, game managing from from being able to take advantage of the most talented room on your you know, on your program. And the running back room is the most talented room on the team. It's the most talented group. Martha has the ability to connect with them, being able to make slight adjustments and tweaks to 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 what these running backs do. They'll have to handle their business in pass protection. That's going to be required. Uh, I believe you're going to get some depth, so you'll see three or four runners over the course of a, of a, of a ball game. Everybody's going to get their work. It'll be a legitimate com- uh, competition uh, in the offseason to see who moves up, who starts the season as running back one, whether it's running back one A and one B, or <laughs> whether it's running back two. But you, it's going to be it's going to be competitive. In the receivers' room, it's a little more interesting. Why? Because Garrett McGuire comes on, and when you bring on a 24-year-old room leader as your receivers coach, at 24, in some cases, he's going to be same age as the guys he's coaching. Now, he spent seasons, two seasons with the Panthers. Uh, he was an assistant uh, and an offensive assistant in 21-22. He's the son of a of Texas Tech head coach uh, and former rule assistant Joe McGuire. So. There's an understanding and commitment. He's a, he's a coach's son. And every staff benefits by having coaches' sons. Simple in the space. But he's going to have to learn Big Ten football. Texas Tech, Carolina Panthers, a little bit different. <laughs> a little bit different than the level of talent you're going to have in that room returning or otherwise, they were purposeful in their offseason about going and getting speed. That's what they wanted. They wanted guys, they wanted flat-out burners. Then you've got some possession guys. And then in the tight end room, you have another coaching assistant. Now, Dvorak will come in. Um, here's 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 where I, where, where I land. I mean, Bob Wager, my apologies. Um, Bob Wager will help with special teams. Dvorak on the linebacker side will help with special teams. Uh, Oliver will help with special teams. You're going to have a bunch of people who handle several, wear several hats. But the tight end room is a room where you have you 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 go and get a major transfer. You already have a 1A talent 
sitting in the room waiting to get healthy so folks can uh, can get hyped about it. You have, you're going to miss some guys like Chancellor Brewington. You're going to miss that. You're going to lose Travis Vokalek, who had been uh, a mainstay in the program. So quite frankly, the room is wide open. The positions are wide open. Is this a one tight end set? We don't know. Is this a two tight end set? <laughs> don't know. If it's run as a priority, the first two tight ends need to be healthy and stay healthy in order for this thing to go well. Not real sure. And then up front, uh, you get Coach Rayola, who one year in the program returns a group of players that he feels like he can mold into something special. Now, Nebraska fans will will lean in. <laughs> we want to. We want T-shirts to say "Run the damn ball," and then we actually want to see action that 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 cooperates with that and says, "Yes, we're going to run the damn ball." It's the Big Ten Conference. This is meat and potatoes. This is where uh, rubber meets the road every year in the Big Ten Conference. And with Prohaska, you've got uh, Nori is back. <laughs> you've got some talent. And then you went and got three potential starters through the transfer portal. This is a transfer portal room because it'll set the standard. Doesn't mean all those guys make the starting lineup. <laughs> it just means it raises the standard of competition. And some old habits will be broken with new talent. And, and Donovan Rayola has the ability. He has the, he has the intel. He has the intellect. He has the energy. Bad running backs room is going to lean heavily on this offensive line group. We'll talk about that other group, that quarterback group, when we come back to Locked on Huskers. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Derek Pearson, DP, Locked on Huskers. Again, thank you for hanging out with us uh, and making Locked on Huskers your first watch, first listen each and every single day. Uh, in this space, we want to think uh, this episode is brought to you by the FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. FanDuel slash Locked On today to get started. Um, the quarterback room is special. In that, Casey Thompson exists in that room. Logan Smothers exists in that room. And then you went out and you got Jeff Sims, Georgia Tech. Established starter. Had some health issues, right? You got to figure out whether he could stay healthy or not, but that's the reason why you brought him in because Casey Thompson was beat up last year. Style of play matters, right? So whatever Satterfield wants to do in this space, he's got to consider one. I don't know if this, what the shoulder situation is going to be with uh, Casey Thompson. If Casey Thompson is healthy, I would imagine that he's quarterback 1A, and it gives them a lot of versatility and flexibility with this offense. Zone read is not out of play. Uh, you know, RPOs are not out of play. Uh, using that speed to, to throw the ball down the field, get the ball out of his hand, and let those track guys that you brought in <laughs> get out and do some work. Got two stellar tight ends. If they stay healthy as well, yeah, there's a common thread going. Health matters in every room there are injuries and in all of these rooms <laughs> these rooms of you know, offensive line group injuries quarterback room injuries running back room injuries tight ends look if you got a healthy guy coming in who comes from the national champions but you got another guy who was ranked number one is in, in his nationally in his entire class at tight end quarterback room injuries Purdy was injured. Thompson was injured. Smothers got banged up. And here comes Jeff Sims, who, quite frankly, was banged up at Georgia Tech. The coaches, the offensive coaches in this space, one, will spend the next month scouring film, staying in the transfer portal to figure out what other talents are, are available, and then what to do with them. 
These coaches collectively have to learn Lincoln. They have to learn the University of Nebraska. They have to learn the athletic department. They have to learn the rest of the football program where everything is. And then they have to learn the players. They've got to learn how to deal with families. They've got to learn how to deal with community. The next few months <laughs> are going to be pretty busy here in Lincoln for this offensive coaching staff. The initial report is this is a rock-solid group. But they're young and they're new in town. And there's a lot to learn on the field and off. Next episode, we're going to talk about the defensive side of the ball and some of these coaches that are in play and some of the position players that they've got to work for. Matt Rule has his hands busy, but he has, in fact, been busy. And thank you for making Locked On Huskers uh, your first listen today. For your second listen, check out our brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Uh, experts Isaac Shade and Andy Patton bring you everything you need, need to know about college basketball on and off the court. You'll hear big game, uh, big name experts. Uh, coaches and players throughout the basketball landscape. Locked on college basketball, available on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts. We'll finish as we always do. Again, once again, thank you for watching, listening to Locked on Huskers. We'll finish with those three words that matter most. Go Big Red!